All right, welcome to another edition of the Amsco Podcast. We're here with the great Liz Congero and the mm, his, so... the I don't know what are, not the what Mr. Bob Mr. Bob Mr. Bob Bob's here Bob's here Mr. Um, and, today, and, and I guess today we're going to talk about the kind of the evolution of uh, of light and um, operating in the in the twenty first century. So and the way Amsco has um, been involved in lighting for so long. How many years is it now? Bob? Two years older than dirt, I am. But see, no, no, but the, the company's not that old. Forty six years. Okay, forty six. Not 40, bad. Forty six. Not bad. It's good staying power. Forty six. Yeah, we got wee, staying power. That's for sure. Yeah. I was a wee lass when we first met. Nineteen <laughs> eighty something. Uh, yeah, eighty something. But I, I met Patina when she was young. Yeah, I started with Amsco in uh, eighty eight, so, oh, wow. so it's been a long time. And since then, I mean, I was actually in the lighting business a little bit before I I was with Bob, yeah, I'm sort of competitor, yeah, and uh, and then I came over to Bob and uh, moved to Florida and worked for him since. It's been great. It's been really great. But we've seen a lot of stuff happen since the eighties. And yeah. he didn't go even further back than that in, in lighting. But um, I remember um, when halogen was the new thing, halogen uh, technology, hmm. you know, which is incandescent, but you just in, put a halogen gas in there. And I remember, uh, Bob, we did a few, um, a few mailings back then before the computer, before email. Remember the Uncle Bob and Aunt Liz mailing we did? Yeah, and I remember the postcards too. We used to do mail postcards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That was, so even marketing has changed. We used to do direct mail all the time. Mm -hmm. I mean, we did postcards, we did flyers, we did all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And, you know, back then we, well, we still are considered a specialty lighting company. Yeah. So specialty is something that a lot of places don't bother with because it's low volume. You know, um, most companies want to sell, you know, thousands and thousands of pieces and get them out there and we decided to go the opposite direction and uh supply people with things that they're har harder to find uh so we found our niche there we really didn't have as much competition as everybody else trying to sell standard light bulbs so i think um you know that was one of our one of the benefits uh, that amsco provided also that uh, bob had a lot of ties with europe Mm -hmm. and um, European lighting. And here in the States, people would use European equipment and they, the lights that were used in them, you can't find them in the United States because they have special sockets or different voltages and um, you know, different bases. So our tie to Europe brought us uh, even more business uh, industrial commercial um, business because of the, the machine uh, machinery needed the bulbs. Machinery needs uh, a lot of different lighting, whether it's an indicator light to say something's on or off, or it's um, um, a heat lamp to cure plastics. Yeah, a lot of that stuff stuff comes from England or you know different countries that, and, and a lot of times you can't find that here. So we mm -hmm. kind of made a, a statement with European and specialty lighting. Um, so yeah, so there was halogen was big, you know, standard incandescent first and halogen came halogen gas light bulbs. And then after that, um, people wanted more energy efficiency. Mm -hmm. So we saw that fluorescent technology was even better, right? So yeah. how would people use fluorescent in a regular socket in their house? So GE and other big companies invented the compact fluorescent, which had the same concept it was mm -hmm. spirally and it was ugly but it screwed in and it saved you electricity it saved you money um unfortunately nobody really just talked about the mercury content in there yeah. and so it was not really a sustainable or uh, environmentally friendly uh, mm -hmm. lighting interesting so now what to do <laughs> so um so when did that when did that change when did that change when it started moving into um, the mercury, the mer they stopped the mercury, then they moved into um, what was the next kind of you know? Well, no, it was fluorescent tubes, but fluorescent had to have mercury okay in the tube for it to work. Okay, 
and disposing of the two became a real problem, whether it was a straight four foot tube or a compact fluorescent, you always had the chance that the mercury, when the, when the tube was finished, it would be broken and the mercury would get out. And mm -hmm. I think the biggest problem, the worst thing that ever was made in lighting was when they tried to make fluorescent dim. Okay. That was the worst concept I've ever seen in all the years of lighting trying to make fluorescent dim all it really did was just flicker and get just it, it didn't do anything like everybody thought it was going to look like incandescent when it did we got warm soft color mm. it just flickered i don't think there's too many people out there still using fluorescent dimming anymore yeah well leds aren't much better with dimming <clears throat> no no yeah mm. that's what fluorescent that, yeah that's that's a challenge um to provide energy savings, you know, the next step was LED. LEDs have been around for a very long time. I remember, I mean, in different form, uh, you would have a very small diode uh, in your car dash panel, let's say, or um, any electronics uh, push button control switches and things like that would have little tiny LED diodes. So they have been around forever. The problem was getting an LED to be um, white, hmm. the white color. So most LEDs are red, blue, green. Um, so there was a, a, a challenge in how to get those LEDs to be white. So they figured out how to do it. And so now it became a mainstream uh, energy efficient light source that could be used, you know, residential homes and, and take the place of inefficient, incandescent, uh, heat producing light bulbs. And it, there's no mercury in LEDs, so you've got a, a more sustainable product now for the environment. Mm -hmm. So I think LEDs will be around for a while because um, I can't think of any other progression. I mean, there'll be pro there is already on the market micro LEDs um, and, and different types, but it's all LED based. Um, Don't forget and organic so, LEDs. Holy and organ yeah, I know. So light emitting diode, you know, so, um, you know, we, we always evolved with, we went along with the, the trends in lighting. And so, because you have to, I mean, you can't just stay in behind or else you're redundant and then you'd be out of business. So you have to keep moving forward. And so we moved forward um, with just selling light bulbs. We moved forward into European light bulbs, specialty light bulbs. We moved forward into... Uh, light luminaires and, and, and wall sconces using specialty light bulbs. So then we saw um, mirrors became a something when I think in the 90s or early 2000s, um, illuminated mirrors. Yeah, 98. On the market. Yeah. In 1998, um, I, I saw something like that <clears throat> at a show in Paris. Okay. Which had been done in Europe for many years, but it was different and we just originally it was just done with incandescent bulbs mm -hmm. and then we uh started putting some phillips high color rendition bulbs tubes in there mm -hmm. because fluorescent nobody liked fluorescent in, in america fluorescent was just uh, kind of like cool white mm -hmm. and the color rendition index on ordinary cool white was like 67 it was it was terrible it was mm -hmm. like like nobody would put fluorescence in their living room. It was like a factory. Mm. But Philips, and I guess Osram too, in the 90s started coming out with these high color rendition fluorescent tubes, which is what we put behind the mirrors. And it made it very flattering and warm tones. Okay. And that kind of changed everything for backlight mirrors. I mean, when once they had the new high color rendition bulbs. Yeah. Yeah, so then we started to develop some illuminated mirrors using fluorescent in the, in the beginning. Okay. And um, yeah, we did hair salons, you know, if you think mm -hmm. of places that needed uh, an illuminated mirror. And then it graduated into different areas, you know, like um, just residential. And then we, we came out with a, a unique product, um, which is our um, angled mirror, which uh, tilts down a little bit. It's actually, it doesn't move. It's, it's statically it's tilted down. Yeah. And that, you know, we thought about that for the people who are disabled or who have um, height limitations. Mm -hmm. And uh, that we thought would be interesting. Why should they sacrifice 
looking having a nice lit mirror or not being able to see themselves, you know. And so that really took off and we're doing very, very well with that um, because they can be used in, in public restrooms, uh, in the uh, handicapped stalls, um, and even in buildings where you need to have some ADA compliance in, in, uh, in the restrooms. And, and I think we've been doing very well with that. So that's kind of a unique piece. Now we don't mass produce those either. Everything is kind of made um, on demand and made in our factory. I think we should take pride in that because yeah. we're a small company, but we still have a production um, facility here and we do really well. I mean, I think a lot of people like that. Yeah. You know, we're kind of a mom and pop and we put our whole selves into what we make. Yeah. So it's not mass produced in China. You know, we mm. try to stay away from that. I mean, sometimes we have to pay the bills, so we have to get stuff out of China like everybody else. But I think the meat and potatoes of AMSCO is that we are a small family and we put our hearts into everything that we make. And you know there's going to be quality behind that because we, mm -hmm. our reputation, our name, we don't want to put out something that's really going to fall apart when you get it. Mm -hmm. So, so I, so I think that's a, a, a big uh, plus about having being a small company. Um, you're able to have good quality control of your products. Can you mention anything um, so, on the on the fact that like who are some of the um, some of the jobs that you've done for like recently or in the past? For the for the handicap mirrors, I know we just got a big order in. Uh, uh, yeah, we we get some good. Um, or we did a um, project for um, the Bank of America corporate offices throughout the United States, um, and they would buy one or two per building, you know. Yeah. But there's a lot of Bank of America places. Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. So we got we got a lot of those. Um, what other big um, contracts did we get from mirrors? I'm trying to think. Um, I know we have on our website, we have a lot of project images um, because our name is, it gets around, believe it or not, as small as we are. And architectural firms uh, will actually specify AMSCO on, on some really big yeah. name jobs. Um, and you'll see, we always, um, we always mention the architect's name on all of our, our, our uh, project images that we get from them. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it, it's good that AMSCO, a small company, can be can have that kind of credibility with, with the architects in that industry, you know. And is that because, you know, you've been in the industry for so long, people know who AMSCO is, they trust AMSCO, AMSCO always comes through. Um, you know, AMSCO's got a, got a, got a great reputable name. Um, yeah, and we, we, we cater to them. We, we, if we need, they need a custom piece, we, we work that with them that way. And I think we're easy to work with. It's mm -hmm. not just cut and dry. You take what you really have and, and leave it, but we'll work with them. And I think that, uh, yeah, our staying power, we've been around for so long that uh, they, people look to us. Mm -hmm. And when they call, they don't, they don't, they're not calling a call center. They're actually talking no, to somebody specifically. And uh, yeah. we, we will make them a custom mirror, even if it's just one up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If they want something that's truly unique that they're not going to see in their neighbor's house. We will work with them. <laughs> yeah. And you know, I mean, you can go to the big box stores and get it a lot cheaper than us. But yeah. You, you want something that's a little nicer and truly reflecting your style and not what comes out of mm -hmm. the big box store. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, do that. we'll work with you. We'll make you one, two, three, you know, I mean, whatever, we'll make each one different or, for the particular size bathroom you want. Yeah. Everything yeah. is custom. Yeah, and we even evolved that that angled mirror to become a medicine chest. And that's got a lot of good response so far. Um, we did sell a few. We went to a show called um, the, Abil the Abilities Expo rather than Disability, it's called the Abilities Expo. Mm -hmm. And um, we got a, um, a, an order or two from um, a facility that uh, caters to people with cerebral palsy. Okay. So it, and also um, assisted living facilities. Mm -hmm. um, those people want to become, want to stay dependent, independent. And so that's uh, one thing you think about trying to reach for your medications and you can't yeah. get to it. Yeah. So we thought about, about the, those people and we created that design. Again, that's a very unique design. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Pull down shelving. We won an award, actually two awards already, the uh, lighting design award and, um, mm -hmm the architectural record um, product of the year. 
So that's an award-winning product, and um, it's one of many, actually. Yeah, yeah. I was just, I was just <laughs> thinking that. Like, yeah, what are yeah. some of the awards that you've won, Bob? Like, just throughout the years, you've won a, you've won an array of awards. Well, we got written up in the New York Times. Yeah, and uh, made the front cover of GQ magazine. Yeah, which not everybody does. That's true. And uh, I was actually interviewed on BBC World Service, where people could yeah. hear me all over the world. So. Yeah. We're, yeah we're we're kind of like a boutique we have a kind of a low profile you know we we make custom pieces we don't try to see who can be the biggest and you know we just try to make the best we can make and we try to make it here i mean mm -hmm. that's it you know bob has been very successful in creating the amsco brand yeah um if you look up Bob Rose's why on uh, Google, he's in Wikipedia. Mm -hmm. uh, he actually was the one who brought many, many of the products that you see that had been mass produced to market. For instance, the uh, Farawat brand, I think you did a series mm -hmm. on that. Yeah. Um, no one heard of, you know, an incandescent, uh, that kind of an Edison light bulb before. Yeah. And Bob did all his research and, and saw all these things in Europe and, and we got the brand Farawat and we marketed it so well um, using original carbon filaments. Do you remember that? We had original, right. we still have some that were hand, hand wound mm. and put into the glass and you've got a Thomas Edison light bulb basically, okay? Yeah. Craft restaurant in New York, yes? Right, that was it. They that put the that light bulb on the menu cover Right. And wow. yeah, I mean, that's still, I think to this day, I don't know, but I mean, so, so we, brought, we, we made the Ferrowatt brand, Amsco did. And what happened soon after we introduced that into the market, that other places said, Oh, look at that. And mm. they ended up mass producing it. And yeah. there you go. But there was no yeah. such thing before Bob brought that in. Yeah. Secondly, um, the filament LEDs. Okay. Bob is the first one that introduced those filament LEDs into the U.S. market. Okay, they mm -hmm. are Chinese, but before that, there was no such thing. We brought this light bulb that looked just like an incandescent bulb with these little stick filaments that are yep. LED. We showed them at um, Legucation, at a trade right. show. Mm -hmm. one time. People thought they were real incandescent light bulbs. Oh, my God, it looks just like wow. a regular bulb. And so we, had so we won an award. A product of the mm -hmm. year award for that and right after that we were copied and mass produced and <laughs> shoved right out of the market yeah. but yeah, we're still selling those today we're still but but that that's, was that's how it's been right. it's and whatever it, you it, come up with they they copy yeah. and you see them now in home depot shelves yeah. i mean and but but there was we started that amsco mm. uh also no, another led product was the corn cob led bob yeah. comes back from from overseas and he says, God, Liz, I saw this thing. It looks like a corn cob. It looks like you could eat, you know, and yeah. I go, what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. And he shows me this thing. I'm going, that's never going to sell. Don't yeah. you do it that, right? <laughs> we won product of the year with that. Wow. And we were the first ones again to bring this product to market because people were looking for in the commercial industry. Yeah. How can we save money and electricity? Where we're using these big metal halides, 400 watts is so much. The, the electric bill is crazy. Yeah. So we brought these things where instead of a 400 watt light bulb, you're using a 40 60, watt light bulb. A 40 or a 60, and they came on immediately with mm -hmm. metal halide and other HID type gas bulbs. Wow. They have to cool down. So if there's a momentary power failure, yeah. The lights go out, yep. and it'll be three to four minutes before they come That's back. That's like a, I remember football games when the lights would go out. That's, you'd have to wait for right. five, well, ten minutes for them to come back on. That I, was I back that. metal halide days, right? Mm -hmm. I don't wow. think very much. I don't think any stadiums are doing. I think they're all they're all LED now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we we ended up getting a hundred thousand dollar order for wow. corn cobs a, a little while back. Wow. Um, they were done in, for Las Vegas project. Mm. And they, I'm not sure. I don't have any project images, Dean. But um, okay. But that was a nice order, you know, for, for those things. And and we still get. It. I just got another twenty thousand dollar order yesterday for the same thing. Well, tell so, me, tell me a little bit about this. You know, operating um, 
operating in that market, you're being copied, everything's, you know, and, and, and things are becoming a little more difficult because what you, what you pioneered, is just being ripped off. Exactly. How is like, is that, is that the, been like the main struggle as a small boutique business operating in t the 21st century? What? Well, I wouldn't say it's because of the 21st century. It's just yeah. we're a small business. Yeah. So there's only so much, you know, resources that you have. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, you'll have somebody who is, a, you know, a very big company, like let's say Acuity or, you know, these really big companies yeah. that got a lot of money behind them. And so mm -hmm. they've got the ability to, to do that, the big volume. Yeah. So that's what that's, you know, and that's, that's the drawback. But mm -hmm. again, we, we build the brand, we build um, a market for these mm -hmm. products and, and we do well with it and we still do well with it. Mm -hmm. There's enough crumbs out there for everybody to do well, you know, and, and so what are you going to do? I mean, that, but that's fine. But we keep that. The, the point is yeah. though, that in, in 46 years, we've been able to find the next innovation. Yeah. And I think, and by showing those, those awards that we get and, and always saying, you know, we were the first ones. Yeah. I think a lot of people will forsake maybe, um, you know, another, another company's product and stay with yeah. Amsco because of that reason. Yeah. And some of the, the little, the things that we're working on right now, you, we, you know, let's talk a little bit about lightly, a little bit about OLEDs, kind of how that's all right. kind of tying into kind of what we're seeing. And, you know, Bob's got the eye here and Bob right. sees things that are unique. Yes. Um, what is, what is it about lightly that, and that, that really drew you and OLEDs that really drew you, um, drew you into this, is, this is, this is different. This is cool. Yeah, well, I think before that, um, the, one of the reasons was um, looking for the next best thing. The right? next best thing, yeah. We were looking for the next, I mean, there Correct. aren't too many new things coming over the horizon. Yeah. Right. And we're trying not to look east. We're trying to look west. Rather than to China, there is... There are things coming out, especially mm -hmm. out, of, out of Germany. Mm -hmm. You know, unique products. And I guess... OLEDs was the next thing, and Lightly was a something that was based on the OLED technology, mm -hmm. but was it, it didn't have a lot of the drawbacks that OLEDs had, mm -hmm. and uh, it had some of its own, but it, it was a good niche product that would fit in for someone who needed something like flat lighting. Yeah. And so it was... And it kind of went hand in hand, I think, with OLEDs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because if you think about some of the unique designs that you can do with a, a planar light source, right? So, um, you know, when you think of lighting and light bulbs, you think of a socket. Yeah. In some way, sockets, fluorescent or screw or whatever. With the OLED design, mm -hmm. there's no socket anymore. So you've got a light bulb, basically, that's a, a square or a round yeah. circle. So now, as a design uh, an illuminaire design designer can say, well, I don't have to worry about having sockets and all that. I can mm. just incorporate this square and now you've got a really flat surface, right? Yeah. You can actually even surface mount it to a wall yeah. and, and you've got this, it looks like a recessed uh, light source. Mm -hmm. So, so that in itself is the uniqueness, this thin, thin light source. It doesn't require a socket. So that draw, drew us to that first. Also, that OLEDs are are going to be introducing um, a curved uh, panel, mm -hmm. with, which uses um, Corning Willow glass. It's actually glass that mm -hmm. can bend, not plastic. And so that's on the horizon with OLEDs. So we said, well, let's let's work with some OLEDs and let's see if we can design a few things, which we did, mm -hmm. uh, there, which you could never do with a regular light bulb. The yeah. LED light bulb, even LED tape, is not the same yeah. because with OLEDs. You've got the, the square itself is one diode, mm. and and the the organic material is just like sprayed on and sprayed on and it's even. You can't get that with an LED tape because mm. you're going to see dot 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 dot. Yeah. And so that is an attraction with OLED. The drawback with OLED though is that it's pricey, mm -hmm. and so Bob said, "Well, you know, the concept is great. What else can we do?" Well, and he was looking at some startups in the lighting industry and he came across um, Lightly Tech. And we said, well, what's this? It looks just like an OLED, but it isn't. This actually, what they did, it was very innovative, is they took, 
the fact that OLEDs was very cumbersome to manufacture and a little bit more expensive. Let's do something on um, the, the less expensive side. We'll take LED technology, which are regular LED chips, my, micro min, miniaturize them and put some kind of a light guide plate from, so there's LEDs here, LEDs here, and it goes, J -j 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 -j, but on a small scale. So you don't see any dark spots. You don't see any dots. It's a patented technology, but the whole thing is flat. Again, no socket. So, and it's a little bit more inexpensive than OLED is. Mm. So you've got OLED technology as its own and LED technology as its own. And mm. they can complement each other. We actually made a, the gravity um, pendant light with an actual um, LED outer piece, mm. OLED inner piece. And it's a really nice complement. That's cool. So I wouldn't say one is better or worse than the other. We were offering um, two different technologies with the, with this. And so here we are innovating again with lighting and how else lighting, how else it innovates. So so that's that's the evolution. So from here, we don't know. Well, I can tell you what's going to happen from here. Tell me. Um, I want to know. I don't know. I'm going to tell you. Well, <laughs> well, it's already happening, but because of the smart technology, yeah. smart homes, Amazon, um, Alexa, and all of the, the smartness um, and the internet of things. Everything is in the cloud and through the internet. And so is lighting. And lighting is going to be more prevalent in in smart homes mm. because they're, they're experimenting now with, um, because when you're on the internet, you use broadband and using radio waves to connect to the internet. And broadband is being used so much that it's overloaded with getting slower speeds. Light, LED light can be modulated in such a way that it can transmit data. Wow. So you can have, you can sit under an LED light, a regular LED light, not, nothing special, that would be modulating um, light waves to your iPhone. And you would be able to connect, and you can, it's, it's already on the market, you can connect to the internet via a light bulb. Wow. Not radio waves. And because there's so many people on the internet, the radio waves, there's hardly any more left. So what, where, how are we going to do this? So lighting now is going to be, um, what did I, what is it called? Um, Li-Fi. Li-Fi. Instead, instead of, of Wi-Fi, Wi it's Li-Fi. And you can Google that and they're experimenting. And of course, Philips uh, is involved in that. And so um, the, the drawback so far is that the um, tablets and iPhones and computers don't have a receiver to receive the light. So mm. they have to have a dongle attached. And so that's right now, nobody wants to bother with these little dongles in there. But mm. as soon as Apple or, or somebody comes up with a receiver within the phone itself, then you can really just use light anywhere you're inside, anywhere you're inside, you can use, and it's more safe too, because yeah, it's, it's very you know, secure. You can't, yeah, you can't hack because it. light waves right. don't go through walls, right. you know, you're, you're in a, a secure in, environment. So li fi so, you know, lighting for it in itself is not going to be as valuable as what the light bulb can do, mm. just like a phone, right? Mm -hmm. The phone is not as valuable to make phone calls. Mm -hmm. The phone is more valuable for what else it does. Mm -hmm. So lighting now, you know, for the sake of lighting is, is really a, an afterthought compared to what a light bulb now can do, which is provide internet and, and um, data. So that's the evolution of lighting. You know, it's really taking a, a turn, you know. All the way from the Edison light bulb now exactly. into smart, smart LED bulbs that smart bulbs that, that can that can connect you to the and, and unbelievable. They, and they talk to each other. The light bulb. Yeah, you talk about like they're doing this in cars as well. I've mentioned that they're getting into cars and how I'll be able to. Is that what you're saying, Bob? You're right. The, the the lights will be able to from one car to another will be able to talk to. Yeah, them, and yeah. And the wow. same thing with, with your street lights, because yeah. as you're driving, the street light is going to beaming down to you and how, yeah. how, how many feet per street light every time. Wow. So it's very possible. I mean, the, 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 uh, the value in a light bulb will not be for the light emission. It'll be for yeah. the other things that it can Like self-driving cars, the lights will, will, yeah. will be sending yeah. information data from one car to another yeah. as, because you won't be driving the car. The car will be driving itself and it'll all be sending li-fi information from yeah. the street lights yeah. and the car and everything 
Mm -hmm. you, you just sit there. I don't know what you're going to do in the car, but uh, <laughs> you'll have plenty of time to do it. Yeah. Well, that was awesome. That was great. Yeah, Anything, so we'll see where Rams goes going to head after this. Right. <laughs> That's right. After the COVID nineteen is all gone, and you know, oh, yeah. business the business is back up and running, and yeah. everybody's yeah. saying hello to each other, and you know, trade shows are are personal again. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm looking forward to the next uh, forty six years. So we'll see mm -hmm. how that goes. Good. Plus, it's good to have a crystal ball too. Except. That's yeah, true. Well, but, but that's that's, that's you know, we don't have one. Though. Cool. All right. Well, thank you for everybody. That was that was awesome. Liz Congero and and Bob Rosenzweig and and Alan Smith guys. Thank you so much for tuning in, and uh, we'll catch you next week. Okay. All right. Sounds good.